Yeah, now it's good, good to go. Okay. So, good afternoon to all the attendees. And as sir uh, told, so myself, uh, Dr. Moshe and uh, my research area is basically in the remote sensing. If we focus, then uh, my research area is basically related to high resolution optical images. In uh, case of optical images, if we say, then uh, the uh, another part is that one. Uh, normally, what we will do, we are just uh, doing a, a classification by using a pixel-based classification, or sometimes we'll say we are going for the sub-pixel-based classification. But the sub-pixel-based as well as pixel-based classification is very good whenever we are uh, uh, talking about that uh, uh, for a medium resolution or we say for a low resolution images. But in case of high resolution images, wherever our pixel size is very, very small, then in that case, our pixel-based classification, or we can say some pixel-based classification is not too much appropriate. Because in that case, an object is not represented by a single pixel. In that case, it is required to represent an object a number of pixels that required. So in that case, the another technique that is object-based image analysis is useful for that particular classification approach. So, with that particular stuff, I just uh, start that uh, with uh, what is that object-based image analysis technique and uh, what type of approaches we are going to use. of today's discussion is uh, basically discussion on OVI, that is object-based image analysis. Then uh, the different softwares that are used are object-based image analysis. Then uh, uh, one major software that are mostly used for uh, many researchers in object-based image analysis, that is Epognition. And then we uh, did few research in different areas in urban in glacier classification. So we'll discuss these uh, applications also. I'm audible properly. Yes, sir, you are audible, sir. We'll start with object-based image analysis. So before starting this one, first we'll discuss what is an object-based analysis, what is OVIA. So the thing is that one OVIA is basically, it is a sub-discipline of GIS science that devoted to partitioning a remote sensing imagery into meaningful image objects and assessing their characteristics through spatial, spectral, as well as temporal scale. So here the uh, thing is somehow different. In our pixel-based classification, we are focusing on the pixels only. But as we say, the OBIA technique is uh, uh, useful mainly in case of high-resolution images. So in case of high-resolution images, to uh, represent an object, number of pixels are required. So in that case, our focus is based on the object. So first we have to create the object by combining the pixels and then we are focusing on the object so in that particular uh, object based uh, image analysis technique uh, there have a, a few layers there have a mainly three levels for this, uh, that uh, object based image analysis the first level is image segmentation by segmentation we'll just try to divide or we try to combine the different pixels to make an object then we have to focus a different uh, attributes so number of attributes are there we have to focus that which particular attributes are very much useful to defining a particular class and then after taking this one then we will move for the classification so here the classification is not a pixel based classification here we are going to classify the objects not a single pixel so these are the three main parameters main steps for the object based image analysis uh, that particular system first why uh, why we choose OBIA so as I have already discussed that uh, we are focusing for a high resolution images. Uh, 
are based on the assumptions that a pixel belongs to its near uh, uh, neighboring pixel class. Here the thing is that one one more part is there that in pixel based classification or sub pixel based classification we are only focused on the single property of the pixel. That is simply we will say that based on the spectral value of the pixel. In case of OVI game, whenever we are we have combining the pixels, making the segments, and then we are going to classify. And here, before combining, it is also we have to found that uh, we uh, an object is created. Uh, sorry for the interruption, but I think your PPT is not um, not at the right place. I mean, it is not going forward. Uh, sir, am I audible? Hello. Am I audible, sir? Voice, sir? Voice, sir, am I audible? Okay, sir. Sir, I think the PPT is not going to go ahead. The introduction of the PPT is going to go I think it's stuck somewhere. Is that because too much rain is Yeah, so you can do one thing, you can uh, just, no, no, it's only on first PPT only. Again, yeah, no, no, just uh, you can do one thing you can uh, uh, this one close your PPT and start uh, it again and then share. I think so. It's uh, your PowerPoint is stuck somewhere. Okay. Now it's okay. Oh, now it's okay. So now PPT is representing why OBI, yeah, yeah, now it's visible. Visible, doctor, uh, you can continue. Yeah. Okay. Of uh, OBI, as I told you that uh, in case of pixel based or per pixel based classification, our focus is mainly on the spectral value of the uh, pixel. But in case of OBI, we are by the help of that uh, pixels. So due to that particular uh, things, first it is required that instead of only spectral, we have to also find out the another properties that uh, of the pixels by its value. First we have to take that one, never uh, class pixels. And then in, in that particular, so if it is found that the pixels and the neighboring pixels are belonging to the same class, then it will be going to merge. Otherwise, it has to create a different object. So this is the first step. After that, the OVIA should be able to integrate additional information, such as the texture value of the object, shape of that particular uh, object to be found, as well as the size of the particular object. So in all the parameters we have to consider whenever we are going to do the classification based on OBI. So in, the, in that particular system is that one that uh, our classification is as we are uh, focusing on high resolution or uh, we can say very high resolution, then in that case we have to focus every part in uh, classification technique. We are not just focusing only on the spectral values. 
here we'll also say that in in that particular uh, significance whenever we are going to do classification then by grouping by increasing the object size we can classify in that our uh, image in number of labels like that one we can as per our requirement we can classify to extract that uh, uh, the uh, classes of label 1 we can further extract to get the classes of number uh, label 2 will also move for the classification of level 3 and so on. So these are the basic fundamentals related to OBI. In case of at, um, OBI, as uh, we'll say, we have a number of uh, uh, high resolution images there. So if we say we can use uh, that uh, imagery of Iconos, you can use Quickbird image, word view image, and so on. Uh, number of high resolution images are there. So it is better if we focus on high resolution image and uh, in that sense, we get the maximum information. So this is basically related to our uh, OBA. So if we uh, say in our uh, OBA, that is uh, we have a, a number of awareness that OBA method can be made better use of neglected special information implicit within the remote sensing images because in uh, our pixel based or how we can say in other you know, that uh, sub pixel based classification we are only focused on spectral but here it is related to our spatial and as well as uh, other uh, few uh, parameters for other few properties so we have to take that all the information so that our classification accuracy uh, becomes too much like the the uh, need of multi scale up in the monitoring, filling, as well as management of our environment condition is very useful by using the uh, technique. By using OBA technique, we can uh, represent our classified map as per the required. Like, like that one, the application is required to uh, uh, for a speed of load office. Then the, the requirement is that uh, they wish to uh, take that um, uh, road. So in that sense, we have to focus more focus on we have to focus on what system for a drainage system. We have to focus the drainage well. So in that sense, what happens by using OBIA, we have the uh, capability that uh, as per application, we can classify or we can extract the images in that particular format. So uh, that uh, the, uh, as we say that our applications of OBIA in various ways, like that one, in, if we say is of our urban, then we can say urban area extraction, growth assessment, then uh, um, that uh, building extraction, road extraction, then uh, that land use, land cover classification, change detection, assessment of any damage, that assessment of uh, uh, that uh, any uh, changes, or we can say that glacier coverage area, we can map that one, we can also find out the changes on the uh, glacier surface. So a uh, number of applications are there by which we can get the information. Excuse me, sir. Uh, um, sir, your PPT is again stuck by OBI. A second slide. Dr. Mohit, you can do one thing. You can stop your uh, presentation and you can load it again. You can open it again, then share. I think it will do. So you are yeah, I'm, I'm yeah okay. that may be done.
No, it's coming, sir. Your slide is visible now. You can maximize no, it. Changing. No, it's not now. Go for the next slide. Next. Yeah, it's changing now. Of OBI is visible. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. So, open can be applications in num uh, various directions in various fields. So, uh, as we have uh, already discussed, that uh, how to proceed for uh, OBI. So, here that the, it is the basic workflow of object-based image analysis. So that particular uh, that uh, steps, as I earlier discussed, that uh, in for OBIA there is mainly three steps for object-based image analysis. The first one is image segmentation, then the attribute selection, and after that attribute selection, we can go for uh, image classification as well as image object. Extraction. Here it is written. It is it is not related uh, written as the classification or we can say extraction. It is written as image object classification as well as image object extraction. So this is the measured uh, difference in that uh, field of that uh, um, that uh, OBIA as compared to pixel based as well as sub pixel based. So image object classification means first we have to make the object. For making the object, it is required we have to do image segmentation. Then segment uh, after uh, combining as, as we can say, whenever we are going for the different labels in the image segmentation, then either pixels are combined, which means simply we can say surrounding or neighboring pixels are uh, combined together and uh, increase the object size. Or sometimes it is observed that object pixels are uh, not not in a similar characteristics. So in that way, whatever they are divided. So in that sense, there is a, a different types of image objects have been formed, and then that objects may be classified as per the required number of classes. Our second way we have to go for the image extraction. Image extraction means we have to focus for a particular type of object, particular class object. So both the conditions we can do, we can directly classify other or we can directly extract that particular. It is uh, representing that uh, uh, different So in uh, uh, satellite, we have satellite images. Then we have to go for a uh, image segmentation. Number of segmentation techniques are there. We have to apply number of segmentation techniques. Then we have to form uh, image objects that is based on the segmentation. Then we have to go for feature extraction. Feature extraction, we have to extract the required or we can say the sufficient amount of features or attributes that are useful for extract or we can say to classify an object and then we go for the uh, object classification so this is the basic fundamental of this one but uh, if, if we uh, say for OBI, then we have a uh, uh, different different uh, parameters so i'm just uh, representing you in a pictorial view this is an image uh, image is visible to everyone visible this is a one image this is a iconos image of uh, one area so here i'm uh, just showing that how we can how can we apply that our image segment uh, object based image analysis to get a classification as an object image object extraction so first step is that one we have to do segmentation so after applying the segmentation we got these type of segments. 
so it is representing that we have a, a image and we have applied a segmentation techniques and after segmentation we got a segmented image so now we got we have a image as well as we have a segment now segmentation we have to apply the uh, either we go for image object classification or we have to go for image object extraction as we, uh, as we have uh, here uh, getting that number of objects are there so we can say we have a number of classes are there so simply it is uh, uh, it's a visible are visible yes sir sir are we on so the workflow are we on the workflow of object uh, this slide sir it is a uh, basically opia not not a workflow after that uh, uh, after workflow this is a next slide sir it's showing only the workflow of obia slide now it's we are uh, seeing that this one i think chandigarh or like that one uh, satellite image yes sir now it changed yes yeah. now it's visible. some high resolution satellite image is there satellite image is there one uh, we can say set, uh, that uh, part of that image is there now it, it's went again now it's visible this is a segmented image no sir yeah now it's visible yeah now image has been segmented your image has been segmented okay so after uh, image segmentation we have a uh, go for either either go for classification or we go for the image object extraction so this is our classified image our uh, third image is visible classified image sir only obia and one image is visible yeah only one image and that classified image is not visible sir now it's now yeah. it's visible i think it's taking time to load now oh, we uh, okay. can oh, see three images sir with classification also i hope uh, three images or four images only three images are visible okay yeah actually i think your presentation is too much heavy and internet connection is not that much good that's why it's not taking up images we can see three images one satellite imagery second segmented and third class now we are seeing binary image also yeah now we are seeing yeah okay so uh, here uh, it's representing that uh, images that uh, our satellite images and after this one we'll do that uh, segmentation and after segmentation we can apply any of the technique either um, we can go for image object classification or we have to go only for the image object extraction so it represents that as per the our application if it is required to image object classification then we have to classify all the objects as we have already classify uh, already know in case of uh, uh, pixel based classification we can classify Here, in case of OBI, the another part is that one we have to focus only a single. Uh, so here I have focused only on the building areas. So it represents the building, the constructed areas in uh, in our binary image. 
here uh, there is a, that uh, if we say if we find then uh, uh, that apart from that building you also found few parts are classified but the thing is that one there is uh, as you know that uh, our classification yeah so uh, in that particular uh, for obia in case of our uh, remote sensing we have a number of softwares uh, developed by different companies for that uh, for do the object based image analysis the softwares are basically uh, as here uh, mentioned that is a machine set program that is uh, developed in early 1980s to uh, do that segmentation then uh, uh, the another uh, software is a road finder that is developed in 1980s for uh, basically finding out the linear features available on the earth surface so in that uh, particular system that uh, uh, the drawback of this particular system is that one it basically focus on the uh, linear features and the second thing is that one it, it is not able to uh, that extract to calculate the uh, uh, segmentation quality the another part is that one in that system we are not able to uh, extract the required attributes so that that is uh, also one of the software the next one is next slide yeah then uh, after that another uh, software has been developed by uh, a spring that is also useful for the object based uh, image analysis in that particular system the silent features of this particular uh, software is that one gis and remote sensing image processing with obia that is object oriented data model this is not a directly we can say obia this is object oriented data model so in that system a model has been developed and based on that one we'll go for the object based in this classification as as uh, uh, that uh, in in all the systems as i uh, uh, discussed earlier that they follow basically the three steps the basic steps are that uh, image segmentation or attribute set after it is a image classification but most of the cases we found that they go for image segmentation and then they go for the uh, image object classification the image attribute selection is a you can say intermediate step that is uh, uh, without image attribute selection we can go for uh, directly classification but with the help of image attribute selection we can we have a two advantages the first thing is that one by using image attribute selections we can reduce the size of the uh, that we can say classification of, uh, of that of that particular generated image the second thing is that one by using by selecting uh, appropriate attributes appropriate features we can increase the classification accuracy as well as the other uh, advantage is that one by reducing the size the speed of that uh, classification too much increase so that is that uh, we can say this is the major advantage of attribute selection while the another is objective that is developed by adas imagine in 2010 and it also provides the multitude uh, that a multitude of features uh, and uh, techniques for OBIA. In that particular system, there is a uh, number of uh, uh, edge based image segmentation techniques have been used. Then the drawback is again in all the techniques that one that uh, none of these techniques are able to uh, assess the quality of the segmented image. However, after that, next slide. the uh, another image software that is developed by uh, definitions this is uh, def uh, definitions recognition software and this is this software is broadly used by the uh, ovia researchers this technique have a advantage that is has a most promising software and it provide a multitude of features and techniques for ovia it is suitable for any kind of remote sensing data in that particular technique a remote based image segmentation techniques have been used that various uh, segmentation um, uh, parameters various segmentation uh, techniques 
had been used but the most common techniques that are uh, used by researchers that is a multi label or we can say multi resolution image segmentation techniques in that particular system uh, technique that attribute selection technique is somehow uh, in few parts uh, the in latest software there is a uh, that uh, uh, our attribute selection is technique uh, is somehow used but uh, in this the attribute selection is uh, technique as well as the classification uh, assessment as well as the image segmentation quality assessment these are in under research so in in that particular that uh, by uh, that uh, the definitions ecosystem software is um, widely used by researchers so uh, our focus is based on bia that is based on our ecognition or we can say definitions ecognition software next slide please so how to do ecognition in a OVI system. So, ecognition that is, it is a basically uh, OVI software, and in that particular uh, software, in that particular ecognition system, if we say, then the first step is image segmentation. So, image segmentation is simply we can say in that particular part, what happens? There is a uh, pixels are there, and we are going to grouping the pixels to form an object. They are in in uh, if we say in ecognition, then we have a uh, basically our segmentation is uh, two types. One is top down image segmentation, and the second one is bottom bottom up image segmentation. In case of techniques, it is basically that uh, first we have to take out that all the uh, image belongs to a single class then we have to further divide into different different categories like that one first we will say that all the images are a single class then we have to go for the next down level and we will say in that particular image there is a category of urban there is a category of vegetation there is a category of uh, water then we have to go for the next level we'll say in urban we have a different features like then uh, we have a buildings we have a road we have a um, that large building then in case of uh, vegetation we'll say we have a forest we have a trees we have a, a cropland similarly in case of water we'll say we have a river can we have a, a swimming pool we have a ponds etc as there so this is the top down it means we'll start from a top and going for a going to a single pixel this is a top down image segmentation technique the another way is bottom up image segmentation technique in case of bottom up image segmentation technique will start from the zero level from the bottom so in case of bottom we'll say that every pixel in a class belongs to a one uh, sorry, uh, every uh, pixel in an image belongs to a different class. Now we'll apply our uh, that uh, few merging technique, and what happens that one uh, pixel will uh, out its neighboring pixel properties and try to find out is the neighboring pixel properties are similar to that uh, uh, that uh, desired. A property of the particular pixel if it is similar or we can say if it is homogeneous then they are merged if they are different if they are heterogeneous then they are divided into two different so same manner first starting with a uh, image is divided in uh, that every pixel belonging to an image to a, belongs to a uh, different classes and then move for the next level and we are merging the similar type of pixels and moving up to a top level at uh, desired top level at where we go, we have to classify that uh, these pixels are belonging to a, a water, uh, urban these are vegetation these are uh, water or something so uh, this is the two categories so uh, that in our uh, ecognition or we can say in uh, that uh, in our object based image analysis software the segmentation is either top down or we'll go for the bottom up segmentation technique the another point is that one that thematic layers 
in that particular case as i told you that in all the cases our uh, it, that uh, pixels during segmentation it is not only depends on the spectral properties it is depends on the neighboring properties also so in that case that it will consider the thematic layer such as that uh, different uh, uh, we can say shape of different uh, uh, classes will size up different classes as well as the other parameters so it will also consider these parameters during merging of that uh, pixels to form an object so this property this is moving then with that particular system as i told you whenever we'll move either top down or going to bottom up in all the system we found that the one level is linked with its next level either we'll move for the one level down or we'll move for the one level up in all the systems that these the all the levels are linked together so this in that way we can say our classification whatever classification will do that is in a hierarchical manner so this is in a linked manner so simply we can say if we focus on our uh, that uh, at the top level we have a, a, a group of pixels that belong to a water body then in a next down level maybe these group of pixels is divided in a river as well as pond but at the top level they are linked together and they form a water so in that system means once we have to uh, in case of uh, top down if uh, there is a error at the top value then we have error till the end similarly in the bottom up if there is error generated during the merging process then that error will be till the end of that uh, till the top of that particular segmentation so in that case we'll say the major or we can say important part of obia is the image segmentation in image segmentation we have to go we have to take very much care that the pixels the, by which we are going to form a segment that must belong to a particular class if there is a error in any level then that error must to be uh move up to the top okay so this is the basic concept of obia next slide please so uh, this is a uh, general how we will work with our uh, so in that particular system we say that uh, in in our ecognition this is a window that will open whenever we'll go for uh, that uh, ecognition software then here we found there is a number of uh, uh, blocks are there number of uh, uh, that uh, tabs are there by using this particular tab we can check we can uh, upload we can load the image then select the segment area and accordingly we have to upload a different different thematic features uh, we will discuss it later shaft come uh, that uh, application uh, just move one by one i will tell you next just uh, yeah so for uh, segmentation we have a different different segmentation techniques that are majorly using obia that is a chessboard segmentation technique so in in particular chessboard segmentation techniques it divides the images in a number of uh, squares and then based on that particular system all the pixels all the segments it will identify it will try to find out that it's a uh, uh, neighboring pixels if it in matching case then it will merge otherwise it will move for the next level and divided again divided in that particular part the other is quartree based segmentation technique in quartree based segmentation technique is there that it is divided into a uh, part uh, it, it is divided into a number of uh, uh, segments and then further that particular segment is divided into four segments if is uh different 
then it will be divided into four parts. If they are same, then it will merge and move for the next step. Next slide. So this one, multi-resolution segmentation. Uh, multi-resolution segmentation what is there as I uh, told you that it is based on that one basically in two steps it will follow either it goes to the reason growing it is bottom up or we can say it is top down still so uh, that that particular part I have already discussed so here the thing is that one here it represents the re, uh, segmentation format so here we'll say this is uh, at, at the bottom in that particular image, at the bottom, we have to uh, taken that uh, it represents that pixel level. So here, every pixel represents different class. And then if we go, if we are uh, using as a uh, bottom up, then we'll start with the, with every pixel represents a class, then it will, uh, it will move for the next level and similar pixel will be merged. So here in a next level, level one, it represents that it will a uh, forest, or we can say that uh, uh, meadows, single building, river, etc. Then the similar pixels will again merge, and it will represent a green areas, a building areas, as well as water body. In a format, it's again merged, and we found a city area. So it depends on that one, that uh, application, that what type of application of the OBS. What is the requirement? According to that, we can stop it on level one, we can stop in on level, level two, or we can move for level two, one, two, three, and so on. So it depends on that one, what type of segmentation will do. Now next slide. Next slide. In a, a multi-resolution segmentation, in uh, subsequent steps, it is basically a smaller image objects are merged into bigger ones. And process, it is based on some heterogeneity criteria. So in that particular system, the pixel that at the lower level, which are uh, homogeneous, the neighboring pixel, which are homogeneous, they are merged. If the pixels are heterogeneous, they are divided into two categories. So the same thing that it uh, consider a different properties and based on that one, it will follow. In every procedure, the uh, simultaneous growth of segments to be achieved and it generated if there is a uh, growth is below to that threshold value, then it will represent the same if that it uh, exceeds the growth before um, that above the threshold value, then it means we'll say that our two segments are heterogeneous and both represents two different classes. Next slide. Uh, the uh, concept, how it will uh, go too much or how it will be going to uh, mix together. So in that particular system, our reason growing image segmentation, it represents that based on object homogeneity, our recognition, offer different varying parameters for image segmentation. And these parameters are scale parameter, color parameter, and the shape factor. These three main parameters are considered for the image segmentation in a reason growing image segmentation technique. Reason growing image segmentation technique, it is a growing, it means it, uh, here it follow the bottom up technique. 
bottom up first we'll take a single pixel then every time a pixel will grow grow and the uh, area will be going to be much so these properties are uh, depends on some threshold value and these are the threshold value these are considered as the first one is a spectral or color homogeneity in we can say it is the basically sum of the standard deviation of spectral value in each layer weighted you know that in our uh, color images we have a basically three layers or more than three layers so in all these cases we have to take in care the spectral value of same pixel in each layer and then what are their change where one we have to consider the growth so that is depends on that one the h is equal to that is summation of omega c and represents the c represent that particular band in band number one what is that uh, weighted value in band number two band number three so whatever we have uh, weight we have assigned that according to that will be going to change weight we are now in, in normalized manner will assign that the weight lies between zero to one um, uh, in addition to that we have to also focus on the shape homogeneity and it is defined in two ways that we are considering the most compact shape that is circle and in that particular system the another is edge criteria which means the smoothness feature so we have to take in the uh, ratio between length and width if it's a spherical then we will know that uh, the length and width ratio is very small while if it is a uh, uh, we can say um, sky or rectangular type of feature then this ratio is something more so based on that particular feature these particular uh, parameters will try to find out that the proper that the shape of that generated feature that particular object is in a linear it is in a rectangular square or it is in a compact or we can say some uh, uh, like, like a spherical or circle so that is there the area criteria this is simply we can say compactness and compactness feature it is based on that deviation from the ideal shape and that l by and the root of n in the L is a represent the actual size of the object, while L represents that the uh, if we say then it is it it is that uh, in in case of uh, square or we can say in case of rectangular, what is the size of that particular object? So, particular system with that particular ratio, we have to identify what is the shape. next slide. What happens? We are going to combine all the parameters. The, we are going to combine. In that, we have to calculate the overall fusion value. And fusion value F is considered is rep rec uh, that uh, represent that that uh, two segments are going to be merged, or they are represent a different class. In that case. Uh, uh, fusion value it is represented by uh, omega color into h of color plus one minus omega color h shape where that is used to define the weight that lies between zero to one heterogeneity in color that is h color is represented and uh, 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 that uh, change in color as well as the second is heterogeneity in shape. So, the ideal shape and here we are going to identify what is the change in what is the heterogeneity in spectral shape as well as the color. We are going to merge this one then we have to classify we have to identify different heterogeneous features 
the first set of Indian pictures simply we can say H color. If we represent, then it is represented by omega C n merge C merge minus that is n object one. Uh, then n object two of class two. Simply, what is it? It, it is showing that this represents the after merging. What is the number of pixels and the uh, standard deviation of the merged value? And uh, what is merged here? The merging of object one and object two. Simply, we'll say if we say this object one and object two belongs to level one, while these two values will be merged and it will convert in a single object in a level two. So it means here we'll say. Always, it will take the value information of two level, two distinct levels, the lower level as well as the second level. So, in all the system, uh, whenever we are going to consider, then always it will moving with the two level information. System, it will consider the shape heterogeneity delta H shape, and if we found that the same het uh, shape heterogeneity is uh, then it will represent that the shape is this smoothness, or we can say it is a compact. And similarly, it will try to find out that type of. Next slide, please. We have to calculate the another parameters that is H shape. Using that uh, parameters, we have to find out the heterogeneity in the variation in the, uh, uh, the uh, shape of that particular object. So, again, based on that particular heterogeneity, we have to identify that the object is going. Uh, to uh, represent in a same manner, or we can say there is a change. Then again, we have a V2. I think this slide has stuck again. Now it's changing.
Uh, sorry for interruption, sir, but uh, your voice is not audible actually. Yeah, now it's okay, ma'am. It's okay, ma'am. Shikha, next slide. So, uh, in that uh, system, we have a different parameters so we have to uh, change a different different parameters uh, we have to give some threshold value for different parameters to find out the uh, proper image segmentation so our parameters values uh, parameters are scale shape and compactness here the parameters that will vary in that case we can select our scale is any value greater than zero the our uh, shape parameters is defined with the weightage of color system as we know that our uh, color is somehow we can say one minus shape so in that case and the weightage value is lies between a normalized parameter that is between zero and one the similarly our smoothness parameters for checking out that we had generated a smooth images or the images is compact and say that we are uh, giving the weightage and that light is range into one, one. So by defining these particular parameters, we get different, different, uh, uh, that uh, different uh, seg uh, segmentation. Next slide. So here we'll say after uh, changing different parameters, mostly that uh, most uh, the major effect is on scale parameter. So based on that particular scale parameter, we have a different values. So here we got at zero level, we have a pixel level value, and then well we are changing that our scale parameters at somehow uh, that uh, a few high level, then we we'll, it will generate a level one. Then after increasing more scale parameter, it goes to the level two, level three. So here we got that at scale level, we found that most of classes are much right. Uh, excuse me, Moise, sir. Sorry for interruption, but your voice is not coming, sir. You are not audible, sir. Moise, sir. Moise, sir, you are not audible, sir. Hello, sir. Now it's okay. Uh, yes, sir. Now it's okay, sir. Okay. So, slide is visible to others. Now, this is the... Yeah. Yeah, this is sensing the uh, yeah, this is a basically, we can say, basic applications 
of our uh, remote sensing in we can say simply in urban area mapping so here we have uh, that uh, that images of two different resolution one is simply we can say high resolution or we can say medium resolution that is uh, list four images and the second one is the the first one is that is a very high resolution that is a quick web images so uh, here whenever we'll apply it then uh, we got first we our step is image segmentation so next slide please so here we have a we did a experiment and for that particular the measured uh, drawback of image uh, that obia or ecognition uh, or in any other uh, object based software is that one that we are not able to fix the segmentation parameters we don't know that uh, uh, that which parameters will take and describe the accurate image so in that case in all the systems we have to apply a heat and trial method in heat and trial method it will start from it will go from a bottom up then it will start from a zero level and after changing the parameters in different ways we have a, uh, it it will make a different different uh, class hierarchy as i uh, uh, shown you in earlier that is multi scale uh, segmentation in there there is a class hierarchy is there so class hierarchy here it represents that we have started with a level 1 and in in that system we have to start with a scale zero so whenever we have to start with a scale zero then in that systems that here is uh, you found that number of objects is too much it uh, that uh, it represents that the objects are equal to the number of pixels of that particular image as i told you that at uh, zero level every pixels belonging to a single object now we are going to merge it at level 2 we have just changed the scale from 0 to 1 and here you found that object is uh, you can you just check it it is somehow double so same way is that one that in that system we have to change we uh, by changing the parameters we get that different number of objects to be formed so this is the uh, thing is that one by uh, here we uh, basically we have a three main features that is scale shape and compactness or we can say scale shape and smoothness so while changing first it is uh, we have to decide that uh, what type of shape of that particular object according to that we will select the parameter it is 0.1 or 0.5 it means basically we have to give the weightage means if our focus is based on that one that uh, we have to identify a rectangular type of shape objects then we have to give uh, give more weightage to the shape if our focus is to find out the uh, compactness type of objects then our more weightage to the compactness we check so it is depends on that one on which particular feature we have to give more weight is so based on that one we have to select this one but majorly it is depends on the scale so here we found that by varying the scale parameters we found from uh, scale value 0 to scale value 200 we have a different uh, segmentation and we found that it will start from a uh so many objects and uh, we have created a 25 objects but we can't say this is a accurate segmentation for that purpose it is depends on that one our requirement our application will select a particular segmentation level is accurate here as as in this image it is represented that level 8 is considered as a accurate that it gives the required uh, number of objects so here it is represented that a uh, road in uh, uh, yellow color you found that it is extracted in very accurate manner so this is a extraction feature and in uh, for that particular section we have to again go for the visual interpretation next slide if we are not considering it we have taken a very small scale parameter then we got our segmentation have a lot of segmentation and we are not able to get any 
particular class. So this is this type of problem is called as over segmentation. Next slide. However, by taking a large scale parameter, we found that uh, different classes are merged together and we got very uh, few uh, that images are divided into many, very few segments. This problem is called as under segmentation. So we have to also take care that we have to avoid the over segmentation as well as we have to divide the and uh, we have to uh, take in care that uh, uh, of under segmentation. We have to segment our image with a proper segmentation. So this is a critical segmentation in that particular segmentation. You you observe that you found that every class are segmented in different different segments. Here maybe one class is divided into number of segments. But the main thing is that one in case of critical segmentation, we have to take in care that the uh, segment that the object of another class will not be merged with the uh, with, an, uh, with any other classes. So this is a critical segmentation and we have to find out the critical segmentation. If our segmentation is proper, then we can say our classification will be proper. Next slide. So in that uh, particular system, we have a different uh, segmentation structures. So uh, for that parameters, apart from the spectral, we have a texture, we have a contextual features, and we are going to consider all these parameters, all these uh, features, whenever going to merge one class, one segment with the another. The textural features is a more uh, is contain information about the tonal variation within a band, whereas the contextual features give the information of the surrounding. So we have to take in care that what type of uh, that one segment uh, is how it is close to its neighbor segments. For this one, we have to consider the textural as well as contextual features. For this parameter, for this system, we are considering the GLCM texture features, that is gray label co-occurrence matrix features. In that system, we are considering, we are finding out the entropy, we are finding out the correlation, mean, energy, variance, homogeneity, etc. number of uh, that uh, variable. We are considering for every object, every segment, and then considering it. Next slide. Here, in that system, whenever we are going to merge, as I uh, explained you in, uh, in previous slide, then what happens here, as you say, that uh, in, uh, in level one, that we have a object one, and this is represented by yellow color, and here we have a number of pixels. It's standard deviation, layer three, layer two, layer one, and that uh, N into standard deviation, these are the values. While the object two, it have the next slide. Now in next slide, uh, uh, next level, these two objects merge and generate a, another single object. And the generated single object have a total number of pixels is jointly equal to the same. While there is a change in uh, standard deviation of these values because after merging, we got there is a some. Uh, difference in spectral value of object one and object two and whenever we have force applied force that merging in based on the scale parameter so whenever we have applied the force then by force they are merged together they merge but due to merging they lost somehow their standard deviation their spectral values and here what you found after merging we found at level seven we have a the uh, the values the spectral value is 0.9 and shape is 0.1 while at high level whenever it will it merges then we found the spectral is somehow decreases 0.825 while shape is also changes that witness that is 0.175 so it is depends on that one uh, uh, that uh, which uh, two type of object we are going to be merged let us zoom building is there one building is white color another building is uh, gray color and we have applied a force that say these two are building. 
so in that case the spectral feature is somehow different but by applying a force we have merged together so now after that it will calculate the average value and say this is now average value next slide please here again as i told you we, uh, that internally it will calculate all the parameters so here it will found the delta h it will be calculated by that uh, measured value and it found that the delta h the uh, change in color that is 6498.94 while the other parameters whenever I go for this one then it found the perimeter of object that is object border length l1 l2 and lm after merging this is l1 first second and this is merging lm represent merging and we found that the bounding box that represents b what is the square in shape that is the uh, calculated value uh, that is x max minus x mean plus y max minus y mean and we have found it that b1 is this one b2 is this one bm is this one then we have applied the formula that is smoothness n m l m by b m minus n1 l1 by b1 and so on similarly we for this one we found the smoothness is minus 527.42 while the compactness here by applying this formula we got it is minus 26111 here if both values are negative it means it represents both are going to be decreased next slide now we have to calculate this value and after uh, that uh, heterogeneity after merging we found the heterogeneity of uh, shape that is minus 735.81 now we'll calculate the f value and we found that after, by using this formula the f is 5232.86 and delta h in shape we have before merging this is minus this one now calculated the value of f we found this one value for object one and six two next slide now we get calculate the increase in delta f so fm minus f we got this value is 542.61 now we have to compare it with our threshold value and we have selected the threshold value that is the scale parameter this is 32 we have selected the scale parameter 32 as i uh, shown you in level 8 so this is t that is square of 32 this is 1024 and here we found delta f is less than 1024 thus object 1 and its adjacent object 2 are merged at next higher level and form the bigger object so this is the merging process now goes further ma'am uh, time hai ya ho gaya hello shall i continue ma'am or you may continue for 5 minutes okay okay so i'll go first yeah so in case of uh, attributes as i told you that we have to select a uh, required attributes for this one so we have a different category of attributes that is spectral attributes shape attributes topological attributes textual attributes and all the attributes along with our spectral value we have to check in care to find out that what are uh, which particular attributes give uh, uh, put more impact on the classification or we can say on the formation of image segments so uh, in our spectral we have a number of attributes in our shape we have a different shape parameters area length width border length etc in our topological light we have discussed that uh, it, it is internal so mean difference different standard deviation all these things is there then in case of texture we have a different glcm as well as gldv property this is gray label co-occurrence matrix and gldv this is uh, gray label difference vector matrix so we have a co-occurrence as well as difference matrix to generate this one now we'll apply that attributes values and we got a different different attributes in uh, these bands here uh, what image we have checked in that is three band image so here we found mean 
geo reference that is delhi this is the name of image and this is the information of third one standard deviation of third one the similarly for second one first one then glcm third one second one A slight particular part you found that it have a different different values okay Excuse me, sir. We are not able to hear, sir. I think um, which sir is uh, disconnected or is, are you getting my voice, sir? Uh, hello. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, yeah. Shikha just yeah, yeah. Shikha Shikha just uh, represent that uh, application of uh, because we have a less time. Okay, sir. This slide yeah, is okay, uh, sir. Uh, yeah, here we have a. Uh, uh, Two classification technique. One is that uh, either we have to go with the class related with uh, class. Just will say that our uh, aim is that uh, uh, that uh, uh, we are uh, using the algorithm that is used for nearest neighbor, or we can say another type of. In that case, we have to take in the feature, the standard deviation, and all the parameters of the curse. However, in another case, we are just moving, the, taking the fuzzy classification techniques, and based on that techniques, we are classified by means. Now move for the next. Yeah, this is the class side in, in that class. We found different different classes are there. Now move to the next. So uh, just two minutes, I will complete. Now this is that uh, uh, in case of object extraction, if we focus, then by applying a different techniques, we can extract our residential class, or by applying another parameters. Next slide. We can extract dross land or something else. This is uh, related to our urban features. Now move to the application of glacier. If we discuss, we can apply it for our uh, glacier system also. Here we found that uh, in, in glacier, is a uh, number of uh, different classes are there. So we have a PZD, we have a ice, we have a SGD, we have a MD, we have a lake, shadow, all things there. 
after applying the same process we can classify it into number of classes next slide this is the segmentation then we'll apply a classification next next so this is related to this one now we can also do for the some change detection techniques also if we take a data for a different uh, temporal data for a different time period we'll classify and then we can analyze the changes next so here it represents the change in glacier ice during 97 to 2018 here it represents the various images generated in that system so we can also generate a changes here it represents if it is in dark blue then it is no change if it is yellow then it is change in uh, ice is decreased and if it is blue then ice is increased so here you found that dark blue blue as well as yellow color is there so by using this one we can